Hi everyone and welcome to a series of videos for people interested in getting hands-on with Data Cloud. My name is Dave Norris and I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. In this video, we're helping a fictitious company called Coral Cloud Resorts leverage their customer data by using Data Cloud. In the previous video, we covered the use case, the systems landscape, and an overview of Data Cloud. In this video, we're going to start ingesting the data and then mapping it to a common data model. So let's get started. Our first task is to identify our data sources. Here is the Coral Cloud Resorts data model. We have guest and reservation data sitting in Amazon S3, and we have contact records in Service Cloud. At the moment, the sources are independent, and our job is to bring the sources together into a consistent representation of a guest and their reservation. To do this, we first need to ingest the records into Data Cloud. Part of this process allows us to perform some basic manipulation of the data to suit our needs. Things like changing the data type of the source fields, or perhaps creating a formula field. This process is called data ingestion and uses the data streams capability in Data Cloud. We'll end up with three data lake objects representing guests and reservations from Amazon S3 and contact records from Service Cloud. The data lake objects largely represent the source schemas. In this case, the guest data set uses surname in the source data, but Service Cloud uses last name. This is going to make it hard to enrich the data. So a crucial step is to map the data lake objects to a common data model. Now, Data Cloud provides this standard data model for you. So you don't have to create the objects that you're mapping into. It's already been done for you. And this is called the Customer 360 data model. Let's take a look at a key resource to help you understand this model a little bit better. This data model is available online using the link provided on the screen. It's a data model optimized for scale and might differ from what you're used to in Salesforce. Here's the overview asset. It contains some of the objects available to you, but not all of them. You can see that people are stored in the standard model as individuals and that contact methods for them, things like email and phone numbers, are stored as contact points. And each contact point has its own object. When we map our data, we recommend using a data dictionary to map source object to destination using the standard data model where possible. In our use case, we're mapping guests and contacts. These are people and as such get mapped to the individual object and associated contact points. For the reservation data in Amazon S3, we don't have a good fit in the standard model for our data, so we're going to create a custom data model object. By mapping to a standardized model, we introduce consistency since the source data is now mapped to a common destination with the same naming convention and database structure. Okay, so with our newfound appreciation for the Salesforce Customer 360 data model, let's switch back to the Coral Cloud Resorts data model and build it out. Where we left off, we had ingested data from Amazon S3 and Service Cloud. We'd created three data lake objects. We know we need to map into a consistent common model. For guests and contacts, they get mapped to an individual and associated contact points. And that's available to us out of the box. For reservation data where there wasn't a good fit, we'll create a custom data model object to map into. For Coral Cloud Resorts, we're focused on ingesting just the data we need for our use cases, and this speeds up time to value. But note that we can ingest other data sources at any point in the future. So let's get hands-on in the tooling to start the process of importing the data we need to meet Coral Cloud Resorts use case. So we're gonna start by ingesting contact records from Salesforce, then mapping them to an individual and their contact points. To do this, we're going to use a data kit. Data kits are a feature that allows you to package up data cloud metadata, things like data streams, data mappings, and calculated insights. They make it easy to share and reuse components. 
The data kit we're installing here includes a pre-configured data stream for Salesforce contacts, along with its associated mappings. You just install them like an app exchange package. Once it's complete, we can then move on to create the data stream. So in data cloud, we'll select the data streams tab and we'll create a new data stream. We'll select Salesforce CRM as our source. And this is where we'll see the data bundle we installed with the data kit. We'll select Coral Cloud Guest, select Next. We'll leave the default fields, click Next and then Deploy. So this normally takes a few seconds, but after the data stream deploys, we can then start mapping the data lake object to data model objects. So we'll click on the data stream, click review under data mappings. And because we installed from a bundle, all our mappings are already completed. If we scroll down, you'll see that we've mapped to contact points and individual. If we close the data stream, we can then refresh it with any contacts in Service Cloud by hitting the refresh now button. Next up, we've got Amazon S3. We're going to ingest guest information. We're going to create a data lake object, and then we're going to map it to the individual. First thing we need to do is go to the data cloud setup. We're then going to select connectors in the menu. And this is where you're going to set up your connection to Amazon S3. I've already created one here for Coral Cloud with the authentication details and the bucket name. Now we can click new under data streams. This time we can select Amazon S3 as our data source. We just need to give it the file name to look for in the bucket. We'll click next. Here we're going to name the data lake object. We'll call it guest. We'll set a primary key in this data set. It's called guest ID. And then we're going to change the data type of the email from text to email. And from phone number, we'll change it from text to phone. We'll click next and then deploy. Again, it takes a few seconds. But once the data stream's ready, we can then start mapping the data lake object to a data model object. This time we're going to do it manually, not from a data kit. And there are two ways to do it. I can do it visually in a screen like this, or I can toggle to a table view. Now we can add the data model objects I want to map to. So this is where I'm going to select individual. And contact point email. I select both of the data model objects, and now I just have to map the field in the source on the left, which is Amazon S3, to the data model object on the right. So we do individual first, and then we map to contact point email. So I'll map guest ID first, and then I'll map email address. Click Save and Close. And if my data stream is ready, we can click Refresh Now to populate it with guest information from Amazon S3. Next up, and finally, we've got reservations. Same source, we're going to create a reservation data lake object, and then we're going to create a custom data model object called reservation. So back in data streams, we'll click New. It's the same data source, Amazon S3. It's the same connection. It's just a different CSV file. Click Next. We'll, we'll make sure we call the data lake object reservation. This time the category is engagement. We can select uh, an event time field and then the primary key. In this case, we're going to change the data type of the room number from a number to a text. Click on Next and then Deploy.
Now we can start mapping into our data model objects. So we'll click start and this time we'll select objects from the visual interface. Now instead of mapping to a standard data model I'm going to select custom data model and hit new. It automatically creates a data model object with the same fields and the same name as my data lake object. And because it did that, all of the mappings are already completed for me. So I just need to hit save and close. And again, in order to populate this straight away, I can hit refresh now. We're nearly there. There is just one more task we need to perform. If we look back at Coral Cloud Resort's data model, we can see that reservations have a relationship to an individual because an individual can have one or more reservations. But since it's a custom object, we're going to need to tell Data Cloud what the relationship is. And we're going to do that by hitting the Data Model tab. Then we'll select the Reservation Data Model object. Then we'll click the Relationships sub-tab. We're going to create a new relationship and we'll say we want to map the field contact ID in a many-to-one relationship with an individual and we'll map it to the individual ID. Then we'll hit save and close. Now this can take a few minutes to process but if we want to verify visually that the relationship's been created we can navigate back to the data model tab then we're going to toggle the view from a list to a graph. And when you can, it opens, you can see that reservation now has a one-to-many relationship back to an individual. To recap, we've just ingested guest and reservation information from Amazon S3 and Salesforce contact records from Service Cloud. We then mapped to a common data model to provide consistency. If you want to get hands-on with Data Cloud, check out the link I've provided below. If you like videos like this, give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Salesforce Developer YouTube channel for more content like this one. Thanks for watching.